Welcome back to Plus This. I'm Kathy Deach, and we're still going, y'all. D- can't stop, won't stop. Still showing up, still doing the thing, because um, there's so much stuff to talk about. I um, have two people that are I feel have conduits to joy that I need to learn about. And um, they both have give, been giving me my life on Twitter. One you already know because she's already graced the UBN studio and been on the show. And she's one of my fatch babes. Very talented influencer, actress, extraordinaire, Simone Mariposa. Hi. Hello. How's it going? It's so good, Sunshine. How are you? I am well. I'm doing well. I'm doing as well as I can at this time. But I'm grateful nonetheless. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Um, there was so much that happened this week on Black Twitter, and um, <laughs> and I just, you know, I just follow it. I don't really comment too much because, you know, I'm white. And um, but I <laughs> love, but I love it so much, and I will like heart it all and retweet it all. And you um, were just hilarious to me this week. So thank oh, you. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> And I loved your question today when you were asking, like, what does it feel like to be in a straight size body? Because, like, what is that? Because no could you explain it to me? I appreciated that so much. That was so great. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and we also have a guest from Atlanta who is not in the basement hiding because of the tornado watch and instead really connecting and is really taking a chance on advocacy. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. They are uh, an associate editor for Wear Your Voice magazine and a community organizer and really one of the smartest people I know on Twitter. So I am honored that they are here. Deshaun Harrison is here. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good now. And you have a book coming out. I do. <laughs> I mean, how do you write a book in a pandemic? When I finish it, I'll let you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I finish it, I'll let you know. But what I do know is that it is set to be published next summer. Oh, so I have no choice but to finish it because the contract is signed. But yes, it is tough, but I'm excited for the challenge. I, you know, I like challenges. So Yeah. Now, are you... Are you in academia right now? Are you a part no. of this pausing Everyone school? Everyone thinks that I am, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> um, I studied at Morehouse for undergrad. Um, I'm not in grad school, um, and I don't plan on going to grad school. <laughs> at least I'm um, so, no, I'm just writing and getting my life as best I can. <laughs> Good. No, it's very interesting because as somebody who – uh, was teaching at a BFA program at, and trying to do that over Zoom. But then the school was like, well, we're not an online college, so we don't want you to teach classes via Zoom. It was real trippy, all It was like they like wanted everything. They were like, okay, we're going to end the semester early, so can you teach eight weeks of curriculum in two weeks? And we were like, can we? I don't know. That, I mean... <laughs> I, there's things we can make people do but you know I taught a history of uh, Broadway musicals so I was like I have 50 years to cover so anyway I, so anybody who's like in that world right now I'm real like like or even writing like that takes such a uh, discipline and in this time where usually you have the discipline of staying in when you're writing because you know you can go out right like mm-hmm. right. you know you can take a break I haven't written a damn thing is my point, y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, <Me either. laughs> it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> but we make it work. Yeah, we're definitely making it work. Well, um, I wanted to talk. Let's talk about Atlanta specifically for a minute. Now, I, Simone has been to Atlanta and loves it and wants to go back. And we were just oh. having a little chit chat already about how you're like, yeah, when I first moved here, I liked it. But, you know, now it's just my life. <laughs> um. I mean, this man who stole the election from Stacey Abrams has a lot of nerve. And now he's trying to like, it almost feels like pandering. It's like, oh, yeah, the barber shops and the hair salons and the nail places. Like, it's like feels like pandering to me. 
um, to the African American community, and your mayor is fierce and is like, yeah, 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 don't, don't listen to that. <laughs> yeah. So, can you, Deshaun, speak to that a little bit about your feelings? <laughs> <sighs> I have so many of them, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) um, yeah, governor Kemp, um, I don't know why I called him that. I never call him my governor. I just call him Brian. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Brian (laughs) is the new Karen, right? Like Brian is the new Karen. I'm just saying. (laughs) (laughs) Um, He has, you know, been tough to, to, to deal with, right? I'm also an organizer here in Atlanta. So a lot of my work has been, um, especially in the midst of this pandemic has been around caring for and being intentional about prioritizing um, black trans folks, black sex workers, um, other vulnerable like black communities. And he, um, he does not make that easy. Um, and, you know, a lot of, we've been pushing a lot of work, pushing a lot of demands for him to not do this, this exact thing. Um, he's doing it anyway. I just read a report actually that he just signed and released um, maybe 30 minutes ago, wherein he is saying, well, you know, we'll open the restaurants, but there can be no more than 10 people within 500 feet of each other. And the staff has to wear masks at all times and all these things. And it's like, so why are you opening it up? Like, there's literally no reason to open it up because you still have all these um, like cautionary things you have to do to make sure that people are safe. Um, so right now, um, and you know, I appreciate Keisha that the mayor of Atlanta for um, being vocal on this. I have many qualms with her as well mm. um, because she has also not done the best job of taking care of the black folks in Atlanta. Mm. Um, but I appreciate her for being vocal against Brian Kemp. But right now, it, it honestly, um, it's not a hard thing to do. Trump has been vocal against Brian Kemp throughout all of this. So, <laughs> right. Um, right. And that should tell you a lot when Trump is the voice of reason. So, yeah, it has been a very interesting um, few months. I will not be going outside. Um, <laughs> I'll be as hard as it is because I'm like, <laughs> it's one thing to, you know, be at home, like you said, be disciplined as a writer and, and write in your home and do your thing. But to be forced in, in your home and not be able to go outside, not be able to go see your friends and um and I also live alone so I have like I'm literally by myself I haven't seen another human being in the last three months um so it's tough but I will not be going outside because um I we just we are not even projected to see our peak until the end of the month Mm -hmm. right and he's already opening things up tomorrow so yeah. yeah it's troublesome it's troublesome I also live alone and don't have an animal And as a crazy extrovert, like I didn't even take in how extroverted I was until this whole thing (laughs) happened. I like the it was like week three and a half, like between week three and four that I had full meltdown, like just was like, oh, I'm not okay in any way, shape or form. So I figured out some ways to balance it. I have every app known to man that connects with people. It's really, I'm sorry, Simone, I keep sending you things. (laughs) I keep sending requests. I'm like, will you join this one? Can you join this one? Simone, how has it been in your community? You are, um, you're in South LA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in South LA. Um, I think I'm fortunate enough, like, you know, we're both in California. I think there is a lot more um, strict, a lot stricter restrictions. And a lot of people are heeding those restrictions, which um, I'm extremely lucky to be in a place like that. And on top of that, truth be told, Black people were extra cautious. So even before there was this, there was a lot more like distancing. Um, But I think there is a sense of like restlessness that's building with a lot of people just because like granted, a lot of people in this area do stay in this area, but there is a lot of community as well, and a lot of people are missing that. So um, it's tough, and especially hearing what's happening in Georgia, I think, yeah, of course, in the Black community, we all prioritize getting our hair done, getting our nails done, you know, getting hair. Like, it is a part of our culture, and yes, we crave it, but I think, like you said, it is a bit of pandering that's going on, especially considering how uh, mistreated black people are in the medical industry. So if we were, this is going to put us at even more of a risk. Right. And then on top of that, it's going to put us even more of a risk because healthcare workers don't 
value black lives as much as they would any other person. Um, so it's a little scary to see. And I've been doing my best on my social media to at least be like, hey, y'all, I love Atlanta so much. I love y'all. Please stay in the house. I know it. Like, I'm telling you, look, I have, Kathy, you know, I have long nails. <laughs> have not, like, I, I'm, I'm having a problem. You feel me? But, I'm, but I can't. I can't. <laughs> I want us to be safe and I want us to all thrive after this. So it's tough, but I, I want to be, especially as an influencer, like genuinely, we are here to influence. So it may be for fashion and like body positive activism that I influence, but also people look to me as a voice of reason as well. So I want to be able to spread that message so that we're all good, you know, and we can come out of this stronger. For sure. I want you to know that my Ashkenazi jeans have taken over my hair and my I have my hair from the 80s. So I did full like Madonna dress you up in my love circa 89. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I love it. I love she is like, like that. not the kink is real. It's like so, and I just can't anymore. Like I, I really did not realize how my haircuts every six weeks really matter, and I didn't get that. You know that one. You know those people who got everything done like right before, and you see them, and you're like, oh, like actually, Deshaun, your your hair looks beautiful. Like you thank know. You. <laughs> I'm struggling, but thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm like, oh, I see I see how this goes. People really jumped in right before we got locked in. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I, I, I want to talk about these numbers that are coming out. And Deshaun, you wrote that amazing um, article about the CDC <laughs> and how they're, how would you say that word? A eugenics, eugenesis? Genesis, yes. Yeah. So for those who, who aren't familiar with that word, how would you describe that to a lay person? Yeah. So, <laughs> so <what> that, <laughs> I was like in my head just thinking the academic language. I was like, no. <laughs> break it down. Break it down. Like, um, no. So what that really just means is that um, the CDC has been part of, of a science that would um, – justify you know killing off folks or or ignoring folks or harming folks medically right um as a way to um better the society or or think that um we are um less than or not as important as other people um who are in society and that the best way to to handle that is um to not value our lives through through medicine to not value our lives through science um and to uh, and to kill off those who are most vulnerable because we're the ones who matter the least. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what that piece was uh, about, particularly and specifically about how a lot of folks don't know this. Um, and before I started researching for my book, I didn't know this. But um, in 2004, um, the CDC published a very, very, very widespread um, article that would lead to the war on obesity, um, wherein mm-hmm. they name that like we, um, that obesity, obesity is um, an illness that is um, killing people that they, I think they said 400,000 people were dying a year um, because of obesity, right? And I'm using that word intentionally because I hate the word, but it's the word that they use. Right, right. Um, but um, they ended up publishing another article in 2005, a year later, wherein they admitted that not only was the information um, inaccurate, right, but that they were building those numbers off of 30-year-old numbers that weren't even about fat folks, but was rather about, like, comparing how many fat folks were dying versus thin people and not reasons for why we were dying, Right. right? So it's like thinking of oh, well, I know that this number of fat people died a year and this number of thin people died a year, so it must be that because they're fat, they're dying. And that wasn't the case at all. And in fact, what they found was that it was less than half of that number that folks were were dying because of obesity. I am arguing that nobody dies because of obesity. Um, but even in their even in their numbers, like the, their numbers were radically different. Um, but it didn't matter because after they published that first article in 2004, um, it had taken off. The government, the mm-hmm. media, everyone was using this language of obesity is killing people and, and there's a war on obesity and, you know, in order for you to 
um, to not die, you have to not be fat, right? So then you have the diet industry and you have the gyms making money and you have all these things that are working against us. And now here we are over two decades later um, or over a decade later and we are still fighting against the war on obesity. Yeah, that thing yeah. that they made up. I mean, it yeah. it it felt very calculated. It's interesting. Anybody that I've had on the sh- had the pleasure of being on the show with last a uh, couple weeks ago, it was uh, Christy Harrison, who was saying, you know, the numbers aren't adding up. All of these news articles are claiming that obesity is. Uh, uh, an underlying cause that can comp- give you complications. She's like, but then the numbers are actually showing the opposite of that, that yeah. the people who are considered obese are actually under the percentages of what the actual population is. So actually, it's, mm-hmm. it's she really, she's like, the numbers are showing that it's a protector, which, right. of course, that's not out there. It's like Boris Johnson, you know, gets sick and he goes, oh, I know I'm fat and uh, that's a probably going to be a problem. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, And so, we're, so then everyone feels really free to talk about it because Boris Johnson talks talked about himself that way i mean that's yeah. how mm-hmm. that's how maniacal it is i mean these numbers coming out about the compared to people of color population and the numbers dying are out outra- i mean they're outrageous it is oh i mean like literally like my heart just went like i felt attention like it is um not eye-opening for people who are for people of color. I mean, for sure. I don't think any person of color is shocked by this because they know how they are treated differently when they go to the Mm. doctor. And now there are numbers showing that that's why people don't go to the doctor. And that's also why fat people don't go to the doctor because we are not treated fairly. So Mm -hmm. when you are shamed, then you, you don't get the care that you need on top of it. And, um, Simone, I mean, You've been pretty vocal about the incident that you had just gone through over the summer Mm -hmm. last year. Um, Do you have any insight for us about this? I mean, do you? Yeah. um, So in September, I was hospitalized for pulmonary embolism. um, And they were like big. And it was surprising to the doctors how well, like how lively and how, um, like how good my vitals were when I got to the hospital considering how big the embolisms were. And um, I'm grateful because I'm in good health that regardless of my body, like what the, what everything showed was that I was a healthy person. So it would be hard for them to say that I needed to lose weight to improve this condition when clearly like I'm good. Um, But there actually was an incident um, when I was like in my last days there there was a woman next to me who um, had kidney, kidney failure, had lupus. She was a black woman, maybe in her uh, mid fifties, had kidney failure, lupus, and she was going through all these things. And the doctor came in to speak to her and she was answering these questions very clearly, but the doctor kept asking her incessantly in this aggressive tone. And I was, especially compared to, there was a, a woman across um, from her who was an older Filipino woman, but everyone treated her with so much care. Hmm. But with this lady, it was like they were just aggressive. So how do you feel now? Are you okay now? So would you say that this is a problem? She's like, I'm answering the questions. Also, I'm sick and I'm tired and I want to rest. So I'm grateful that it didn't happen to me, but I'm I'm an advocate for people, especially the underdog or someone who doesn't deserve mistreatment. So I was quick to be like, listen, you need to speak to her with a lot more care and understanding because she's a sick woman and you're treating her like she's making it up, which Mm -hmm. is a constant issue with black women specifically in the medical care industry. Our, our pain tolerance, like they, they overestimate our pain tolerance. They overestimate um, the symptoms that we're describing. So there's a lot of imbalance in that. And I don't know. I have chills. That's a confirmation for me. It just, (laughs) that's like part of my activism now, because before, of course, I'm here for body positivity. I've been fat my entire life. That's all I know. Um, I've had doctors tell me that I need to, like, you need to get gastric bypass. And I'm like, but how? Like, my blood pressure is like 118 over 65. Like, you got me effed up. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) So there's just a lot of things that I've had to fight. But then this was another section that I've never um, experienced because I'm so fortunate to not have been hospitalized. I've been, like, had to go to the doctor very often. So 
it just goes to show like I see the proof I've heard of the stories but now I see it mm. and I feel like it's even more of um, it just needs to be brought to the forefront a lot more and not in the face of just the pandemic you know it has to be talked about from this point forward right right how do you I mean I, listen I don't know how any of this is gonna get solved because literally like if we can't test people all of this is like a moot point to me I, I'd like I and all they say is that we're working on it we know it's not enough we're, but like what are you doing and like I don't know that it's gonna get done and <laughs> that's what's terrifying I mean God bless the people in DC there was a big protest of people driving around cars uh, you know, with their lights on beeping in front of the Trump International. And then they just like threw body bags on the front <laughs> steps of it. Mm. I mean, like who's staying there to see, but I did, I guess. Mm. So I guess it's the word is getting out there. I mean, we're looking in Israel, like how they're doing this social distance protesting. Is it going to, do you think, Deshaun, it'll come to that? Do you think that we're going, because I, I don't see a way out of, um. of this particular thing. Yeah, so we actually have already protested here in Atlanta. Um, we did a, a caravan as well, where and folks were out uh, in their cars um, doing the horn honking and having the lights on and had banners and signs um, because it is an issue. It's an issue that is affecting Black folks disproportionately. And mm -hmm. as all of us know on, the, on this call, like, um, and this was my main concern when protesting with folks, is that fat folks, fat black folks are not going to get any, any sort of care when we go into the hospital. If we have this, I have asked so many of the folks in my life, um, in my life who um, are fat and black, you know, if, if you get this, are you going to the hospital? Are you, are, you, are you going to, you know, see a doctor? And the answer is overwhelmingly no, mm -hmm. right? Because we, we know that not only are we black, but we're also fat. And that in a hospital is a death sentence. Um, and mm -hmm. I have seen many doctors and have been in many hospitals um, before. And so, yeah, you know, I, I absolutely do think that we're going to see a lot more protests in the coming weeks, um, especially as states begin to open up more. Um, I think there will be a lot more room for people to um, be strategic about their protests um, because, you know, before you could be charged as, as a terrorist um, if right. you were doing a specific protest mm -hmm. that, that, weren't like in your car or whatever like that right um so i am i will not be joining any of these protests um <laughs> like i usually would it hurts because i i yeah I, I heart and i hit the streets and i have to hit the streets but baby yeah. i won't be going to these protests I but mean... i know that there will be a lot more to come because so much of our leadership just has not prioritized us. Yeah, it's really yeah, and scary. And you brought up a great point about asking like that black folks, like if this happened to you, would you go to the hospital? And they say no, because we wouldn't get the care. Um, I was recently kind of exposed. Um, there was someone, uh, the pastor of my church, uh, my dad actually works at the church and they found out that um, his wife and his wife's mother had COVID. And so I was freaking out because like, I, I think, thank the universe thank god that everything is good but at the moment i had a complete breakdown because i was like if we go to the hospital they're not gonna care mm -hmm. like that that's the first thing that takes my mind if i mm -hmm. if you get sick if i get sick we literally there will be very little attention paid to us mm -hmm. and that is like that's my biggest fear it's like okay granted like there are some major major risk factors of getting this but to me the major the most the biggest risk factor is the fact that we won't be treated the same as anyone else. So I just wanted to touch on that. That's exactly what I thought when I like fathomed the possibility. Yeah, Simone, listen, you you particularly because of the embolisms are at risk, not just like for yeah. like the obvious, but I, I just read, I don't know if you guys saw the article in The Atlantic that talked about all of the complications. Like we're yeah. not even talking about all the complications that are happening. Like mm -hmm. people are getting mm -hmm. better from COVID, but their their bodies are not the same before they started. Mm -hmm. And one of them is blood clotting. So mm -hmm. I have a, a friend uh, who knows Nick, who is um, the guy who's like the Broadway performer who's getting his leg amputated. Oh, yeah. And I believe that's why. I think it's one of the reasons why. All right. 
we're going to take a little breather. We're going to take a minute break to get some water. And then we're going to talk a little bit of entertainment. <laughs> Let me come back. I know, Simone, I don't have you forever. So um, we'll be back at Plus This. <laughs> after show, after show. Hopefully after we have after. 10 people. 10 people, people give it $5 Patreon. on the Patreon. If 10 people give $5 a Five month, dollars. we could do a whole season without giving money, getting money yeah. for people we don't trust. Isn't that nice? Guys, I'm literally trying to pimp myself to dating apps to try to get us money. Ooh. I'm scared. Don't make me do that. Ooh. Just give us $5. Thanks for listening to our little Patreon commercial. Um, We... I th- like thank you if you've given it's the only reason why I can be here <laughs> um, and have the show also I wanted to give a couple shouts out to small businesses that I've been patronizing this cute little number this little see through number is from the plus bus they're still doing their um, it's hot out here y'all I know in New York it's like snowing and shit but it's, it's hot and I <laughs> so I'm like break, breaking out my bikinis wear them at home um and the Plus Bus is still doing their uh, Facebook Live sales. I think they're every Wednesday. And then on Instagram, they're constantly putting things on. Uh, I also know that they're having uh, their birthday party tomorrow. It's their fourth anniversary of having the actual brick and mortar store. And they always throw Ooh. a bash. And I know that the DJ that always plays for them is going to be playing some amazing tunes. So go to the Plus yeah. Bus. Join them. They're amazing. I love them. Um I also went to a Proud Mary fashion and got a really cute t-shirt that got a lot of compliments because, of course, I wore it right away. Is Miss Piggy, and it says <laughs> Icon, and it's, like, hot pink. It's, like, the best. <laughs> um, so, yes, yes. So, um, you know, please support your, your people out there because, as we know, that money really went to um, Ruth Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Chris's steakhouse, not the small businesses. So, okay, so <sighs> we had that conversation. Yeah. So let's turn to how you get by <laughs> and your go-tos. I know I've been a whore for Twitter, a whore for it. Um, and there have been so many fun things that have been ridiculous. I want to look at them. D-Nice is like the nicest thing that's happened in the longest time. Have you guys been following D nice on Instagram at all when he's spinning? I was following D nice when he first started at the beginning of quarantine, but then Swiss beats and Timberland started the whole battle oh. thing. Right. And so everything mm-hmm. from me up and about the battles. <laughs> <laughs> D nice still is nice every now and again, like with, cause I mean, he started this. So I still, I have to tune in just to respect him because without him, I don't think we would have gotten the, the battles from anyone else. It's probably it's very true, and that he really is like the sweetest person on the planet. It seems like I mean, I it's funny because by name I didn't remember him, but then when I heard some of his songs, I was like, oh yeah, I definitely remember that that moment back in that club back then. Um, and I his late <laughs> night is saving me. I don't know if you guys are sleeping at all. I've been going to bed at like four in the morning because who wants days to be long? I don't. I want them to be short. I guess. So I, I've been doing his late nights a lot, and they've been really sexy he's really really fun um yes guys that teddy versus baby face battle (laughs) simone if you had to explain it explain what had happened if you had to like talk about it instead of i mean it really was an experience and if you have no idea what we're talking about just go to twitter put in hashtag teddy versus baby face i'm like literally crying right now even just remembering it because oh it was so brilliant <laughs> there was a lot happening um because baby face had, had got sick right baby face was sick and like recovering right yeah he had just yeah he just gotten over covid so he was like listen i guess we're gonna do this in music but let's put this together poor teddy teddy riley brought us brought out the whole damn band wow. um was like what a hype man we're like baby this is a music battle <laughs> Just keep it simple. It's like, I know it came from such a good place. Unlike like, this. Unlike a tiny screen. Like the tiniest. <laughs> like half of this. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Like, there's actually, I saw behind the scenes of like probably his assistant or something. You just see the stage, and I'm just like, why did you do this? And there's just so many. I just love, I just love us black people. 
we know how to make the best jokes out of everything. And I'm sure it's part of a coping mechanism of post-traumatic slave syndrome. <laughs> but we know how to, like, take some, like, crazy or weird or dark stuff and then make it true comedy. And I I just love us for that. I just love it. I love it. Oh, it's, Tony Braxton I mean, the battle itself was, was pretty dope. Um, after a while, I was just like, okay, right, cool, we got it. But... It was the, what was leading up to it was like my favorite part. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Who said that I put on my moccasins for this? Who was that? I mean, I was just crying. It was just too much. So much. So uh, Deshaun, what has been your favorite battle so far? Hmm. Probably T Pain and um, Lil John. They oh. had some really, really dope energy. Um, the music really did it for me. Like, um, T-Pain, Lil Jon, they just have so many classics. Um, and also, I just don't think that T-Pain gets enough love for what he has done for the music industry. Um, and, and, you know, I have my own thoughts around the politics of that because I theorize everything. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I love T-Pain. I love what he's done for the industry. So, yeah, I think that was my favorite one. And my second one probably um, was with Jonta and um, Neo. But oh, I didn't see that. Lil John take the cake. Okay, okay. Hmm, I'll have to go look either. up. I didn't see that either. Um, Simone, I loved your shake the room challenge. I mean, there's so many of them. Um, I think we have a little yeah. clip that you might be seeing because yeah. my engineer like ripped it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just, I first of all, I'm amazed that any of you have the energy for that. Like, I don't. I don't just like the thought of setting up a camera in my house made me tired. Um, so, like, how did how did that work? Do you all like chit chatterati? Were you all like, "Hey, what's up"? <laughs> yeah, we did. So, um, it literally took like a week for us to get everybody together. Um, you think it looks simple because it's like, "Hey, just send in your videos," but like, we want to take it up a notch just because, like, of course, all the like original don't rush challenges were dope we were like how can we stand out um besides the fact that we're all fat you know what i'm saying um so it took it took it took a while because we choreographed our transitions and everything and it was just a lot going on but the impact that it made i was surprised because like shade we picked it up granted like shade room is messy like you know that <laughs> but the fact that like they don't they don't really promote like fat bodies on shade room ever because they say the comments are terrible but this is a celebratory video it's not it's like us i guess showing the fact that we're here like we're fat and we're here to stay or whatever um but the impact that it had was tremendous and so many people were inspired so many people were um hoping that the quarantine ends early so that they can go out and show their looks you know what I'm saying? and on top of that it like it inspired other people to join the trend too which was the point like there was a bit of like a lot of other plus size girls felt like I don't know they thought there was a sense of elitism because it's like you you were the first to do it but it wasn't that we were like we handpicked each other's more so like hey do you want to do this let's do this together and now we're starting a trend you know which is the point of doing something like this like we want people to feel like they can join in and they can see that we're doing it you do it too recreate it make it yours you know it's like we're we're, we're the pioneers but yeah, it's After for that, everybody. It's for the Listen, there was a goth non-binary one that had yeah. me like double check in my feelings. I was like, I it's think so that good. I'm straight, but I really like <laughs> but this is hot in a way. That if there is a scale, I must be on mm. it cuz I mean People are nailing it. I mean, I, I, I'm just amazed. My house is not clean enough for that nonsense. Um, I mean, it's not nonsense. It's fabulous. It's I just like if we have a sketch comedy group and Simone, if Thatch was like, let's do it. I'd be like, me. Mm. I don't know, guys. We'd be like, all right, be sure about this. You'd have to see my house. I don't know if I want that. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, what, how are you, what are your favorite clapbacks at this ridiculous, like, quarantine 15, guys? Oh my god, I'm getting so fat. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing about it? Because, listen, we can talk about the macro problems 
and that's true. Like they're like they're uh, these are obviously like huge issues we're talking about. But I feel like the micro is where we actually can like get the toolkit in right now and like undo some stuff. Like I had I there was a woman who's famous Broadway performer the Broadway community has been horrible about it like it's like mm. every dancer think they're being the most creative person talking about how fat they're getting I literally want to vomit um and I came for her on Twitter but I was kind and I was like hey I'm sure you didn't mean anything by this <laughs> but actually this is really fat phobic and it just makes me feel like you don't want to look like someone like me so yep. you should just think about what you're putting out there. And she took it down. I was just wondering what have you guys been, I mean, I know you're always like, you're always hollering and it makes me laugh so hard at everybody. But like, what are some of your favorites? <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me, give me some of your favorites. <laughs> Top 10. Let's go. <laughs> um, I don't know that I have any like favorite clapbacks per se. I just, you know, for me now, I'm queer as fuck. <laughs> so, so I I have mastered the art of shading people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for this me, it really is about the tweet itself. It's like you know, if you leave any bit of room for for me to shade you in your tweet, I'm going to take it and I'm going to I'm going to bust it wide open. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, literally. <laughs> um, but no, I mean honestly, like. For the most part, um, I haven't even, like, I haven't really seen a lot of that in my own personal mentions because I've muted my shit. So, like, if, I don't know if I can curse on here. Sorry. Yeah, no, swear. <laughs> yes, swear. Um, yes, I'm sure I have. Go for it. <laughs> um, I've muted everything. So, if, you, if we don't follow each other, I usually just don't see your tweets, which is kind of frustrating because then I miss out on, like, Cool people who have tweeted me who I just don't see, but it saves my 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 day most times. So I'm like, I gotta live with it. Yeah. Um, and the folks that I follow, either are really great people or know better than to say something like that to me in my mission. <laughs> so, so I haven't really had that issue on, on my face. <laughs> that's good that's good Simone I mean I, you wrote the other night you're like oh god help me I'm so bored I started going into my mentions and <laughs> yeah and arguing with people oh my god I've been arguing so much for no reason because I normally like granted like I have a smart mouth I'm gonna say what I want to say but a lot of times it's just not worth it you know right. so I'm just like whatever it is what it is but recently I've just been like listen I don't have like I just I don't know, it's a form of entertainment, yes, but also like this is a time to teach. Like if if you're gonna talk if you're gonna talk shit in my mention, you're also gonna be you you enter my classroom and now I'm about to sit you down and teach you a lesson. You know, yeah. so um I don't have a go to clapback or anything, but I've experienced it a lot more like my personal Facebook, like a lot of improvisers, because I'm an like I'm an improviser and of course improv everyone's like trying to make everything a bit. So of course this whole like I'm gonna gain weight bit is everywhere. And I'm like, y'all know, by the way, just letting you know, I've been fat forever and I can guarantee you, you'll be fine. And I've had like three people uh, DM me like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I said that. I didn't realize how that would feel about you. So I'm like, cool, eat your words. Right. Now delete that, like delete that shit and go say Now it again. delete so it. So it's like, it's yeah. like, I can't, I, I can't be bothered. Yeah. Um, That's a pretty good one. I've been fat my whole life. You'll be fine. That's actually a pretty good one. I like that. Yeah. That's a meme. We're going to create that one with the big yeah. fat cat scratching yeah. itself. I've also been fat my whole life, so I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love all three of us. Yes. Deshaun, I want you, your your t shirt made like blew up on my Instagram. Thank you yeah. for taking that photo. I hope people buy it. Your uh, thing about body positivity. Um, so, so uh, uh, we're going to talk more about that and like how to get people to um, get to the point where they get riled up about this in the next segment. And Simone, I know, do you have to go? Can you hold on? Yeah. You do have to go. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. I guess I'm a busy woman. Uh, you, like, you, you, have like, no? <laughs> you have meetings. You have meetings. She has lots of so things many. and things. Simone, tell people really quickly where how they can find you. Yes. Um, you can find me on my Instagram and Twitter at Simone Mariposa. You can also check out my YouTube channel, 
www.samaamarifosa.com and of course, Satch Comedy um, with the lovely Kathy Beach herself. Go well, check us out too. We haven't been doing a lot, but like you'll still be entertained. So, so it's entertaining. I'll see you there. It's entertainment. Yeah. Yes, I'll see you I'm over go there. Follow. All right, we're gonna Yay. take an- <laughs> we're gonna take another quick break. Hopefully, we'll get to Atlanta one day. Fat in Atlanta would be oh, off yes. the hook. Yes, come through. Oh my God, it would be unreal. There's so many dreams. 2021 dreams. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll be back with Deshaun, but Simone, we'll see you next time. Thank you for coming. And, and you. right Thank after this break, we'll see you. Hi guys, it's Kathy from Plus This. I'm getting ready for season five. Can you believe it's been five seasons already? We start back March 12th at 6 p.m. at UBN Go. Per usual, this season, I'm not just gonna have one host, I'm gonna have all the hosts. It's gonna be Kathy and Friends. And more importantly, it's going to be Kathy and Friends and you because we're dedicating one whole segment to have a conversation with one of our viewers about how fatness is perceived in the world for them and like what challenges they have. So I want to talk about it. I want to help you if I can. I want to take the things I've learned from amazing guests over four seasons and start to help you out. So email me at plusthisshow at gmail.com or DM me in my Instagram at plusthisshow and you could be on Plus This Show. I'll see you March 12th. Hey, Sean, I'm trying to get into our comments. We have so many. I was so oh, wow. I was so engaged in both of you <laughs> that I completely oh, ignored I, them. But, I didn't even know we were live. I mean, I did. But <laughs> <laughs> we are live. People are on Facebook. Uh, our Facebook community is pretty strong. I'm not really. You know what happened was on YouTube, we played someone's video that they swore would not get taken off. And yeah, then we went to, we got to YouTube jail. So I didn't, <laughs> so for a while, <laughs> nothing was on YouTube. So um, my YouTube game isn't as strong. But we also, we go live on YouTube as well. So hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks. Hello. Oh, yes. They're all, they're all saying, um, <laughs> Nikki Bailey, who's the founder of Fatch, says, queer as fuck equals shade for days. She's so funny. Um, yeah. So, uh I wanted to talk to you, you know, as an organizer, I'm sure you probably get asked this all the time. Um, So forgive me if I am sort of like, if this is what your book is about, like, please, like, we'll go buy the book, basically, is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Um, But so when we talk about solutions to this, you know, I think. I don't know if you're excited. I'm kind of excited because we know where everyone is pretty much right now. So everyone's at home and they're actually really findable. You know what I mean? Like there's an accessibility to activism and to getting people organized and to getting unions stronger and to getting movements pushing forward. I think there's like a real opportunity here. And I was just wondering, um, what are some of your ideas? Like, what are some things? I know I have things with, I'm I'm in a couple of actor unions and I have some things that I've been brewing up myself. But what are some things that you think the fat activist community could start doing? I mean, I know you obviously are in the weeds doing things for trans and queer people of color uh it, it locally and is there is there a way to sort of like take that map that you're sort of the path that you're making and make a map for other people to follow well i, I don't want to give myself that much credit <laughs> 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 but yeah you know so actually there is um a group called fat rose um and they do really brilliant work they're all fat and disabled um activists who most do organizing work from from home right um as disabled folks and um it is their work is brilliant i first got introduced to them back in i want to say august of last year um i went on to um one of their meeting calls to have um a conversation about i forgot an article that i wrote um and yeah, so they do a lot of a lot of great work that I think should have more exposure that more folks should be a part of. Um, I I'm so busy that I don't get to be as active with them as I want to be, okay. and I hate that because they are like they do really important work. But I think that they're um, they're something for folks who are not necessarily 
um, able to do the outside protest and who want to organize specifically around fat and, and disabled issues um, or fat and disability issues. Um, so that's an option. But I also think that it is really important for, um, for us to be in, involved in organizing work that's not necessarily specific to fat folks, right? Um, because all these issues very much so like intertwine with ours, right? Um, I am a fat, black, queer, disabled, poor person who was a sex worker. So I have a lot of things, um, a, lot of, a lot of areas, a lot of identities that are covered um, that would always interact with um, race, racial justice organizing or environmental justice organizing or disability organizing or disability justice and fat advocacy um, and fat liberation, like all these things can join together, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think that the answer to that is for one, for us to be um, as committed as possible to, to learning always, to reading, to growing, to listening, to hearing, even if we occupy those identities because we all have room to learn, right? But also getting involved in different ways that would allow for you to, um, to be as um, involved as possible in work that would affect all of us. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think that, you know, the intersectionality, if this virus has taught us anything, it's that the vulnerable are all connected, right? In such a way that the people, if you go into those cars that are driving up in Houston to or San Antonio, waiting in that line, some for over 24 hours, and you go and take a, you know, take a, tabulation of who everybody is and what everybody looks like it, it you will get a cross section of america and i think that you're right you know the good news is is that we are stronger together and that if we work as a collective we absolutely can get more done and that's why i think that there i have hope in how powerful we are right now um i think that it's kind of amazing how people who fought so hard to make sure grocery store workers did not get a living wage all of a sudden are gagging <laughs> because that's right. like they're the essential of the essential workers, right? right. Um, I, I want to say that I think there also are a lot of um, great people linking up right now. I just saw Angela Rye had uh, Black Women's Voices and she had like eight incredible women on like a two hour YouTube chat. And I was wondering, uh, are you listening to voices right now? Like who are your go-tos that you're sort of taking in at the moment? Hmm. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Uh, and I think that... <laughs> <laughs> It's a great question. <laughs> Thank I, you. I have not um, really tuned into um, Angela Rye's um, talk. I do know that she she held it. Um, Brittany Pacinet, um, Pacinetti is my mutual on Twitter, um, but I haven't really um, checked in with um, that overall conversation. But um, I, I think that. Honestly, a lot of my my go to folks are my coworkers, um, Sharonda Brown and Laura Witt at um, at Warrior Voice, because they're writing about really essential stuff as well as Clarkisha Kent. Um, they're writing about really essential stuff that that keeps me on my toes, that keeps me informed, um, and that keeps me, you know, committed to um, to learning through through this, right? Like, and keeps me committed to to my politics throughout all of this. Um, so def definitely like the folks that I work with and I look to them more than anyone. Um, and I think I'm, I'm rereading a lot of things right now. So many folks would consider me to be a voice that they're looking to. And I'm like, Ugh. but- um, <laughs> I but, consider that just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. For but sure. in moments like these, um, where I'm always pointed back to are, are my books um, because there's always something there, always something relevant there um, that can can teach me something else. So right now I'm rereading a lot of things from a lot of folks um, like Jennifer Nash and Sabrina Strings and Kiase Lehman and um, Bell Hooks and so many 
wonderful, wonderful, wonderful writers and wonderful people. Um, so yeah, I think that those are the voices for me um, so that I can continue to try my best at being um, a decent voice for other folks. You to are listen. more than a decent voice. Can you break down what, where your voice is about and yes. for those people who yes, don't? Yes, because yes. I, I found it because of you and I I'm reading a lot. My eyeballs are getting tired <laughs> because I am reading. There's some extraordinary, extraordinary work. So please tell us what it's about. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so where your voice is a, an intersectional feminist magazine um, that was started six or seven years ago um, by a woman named Ravni. Um, she is Desi. Um, she's a brown woman of color. Um, and she, she just really is like a, super nice, super smart person who is interested in, in deconstructing all of these, all of these um, systems of oppression and domination um, that continue to harm us, right? So uh, Laura, Sharonda, myself, and Clarkisha Kent are, well, Laura, Sharonda, and myself are the editors. Clarkisha Kent is one of our staff writers, um, and all of us are the editorial team. Um, and so we write as far left as you're probably going to ever get from a publication like ours. <laughs> um, so our, our work is is very much um, pro fat, pro black. We're against colonialism. We're against capitalism. We are most of us are socialists and anarchists, right? Um, so we we have like a very 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 particular politic um, that that leans back into. Can you hear me still? Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't know. Oh my god, the tornado! Don't tell me the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I would grab my laptop and run to the room. <laughs> um, but we have a particular politic that 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 we hold on to um, in 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 our writing, and it pushes us further left. I think we push each other further left as we write more, right? Um, well, and now how. in this like in this thing where we're in this pandemic, so much of it, you know, we keep calling it like left, 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 but it really is like you mean taking care of people, you mean making sure that everybody has what they need in the world, you mean that right. it's a way a place where everyone can thrive, and you know nobody oppresses anyone. I mean, that's right. what kills me is that it's made to be like it's this out of balance thing. Right. Like it's like right and left. It's like and if you're far to one side, then you're out of balance. It's like, well, if to me, it feels like the left is so that there is fairness in the world, that there is actual justice. And I love that you call yourself an abolitionist. I love it because so much of what is happening until I feel like this pandemic has to get white people to admit that everything is about white supremacy, like literally Every single issue comes down to white supremacy. And more, Every... more specifically, it's about anti-blackness. Yes. Yes. And the and until we admit that, this like this is this is going to show up in some other kind of way. You know, this is this is something that's just triggering all of this mess that has already been there. It's like someone came and just like blew the sand off the top layer, right? It's like, but anybody who was digging even a little bit was like, bitch, I know what's really underneath all this. This is right. a mess. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, you know, it's funny, the right left thing, I, I'm always like, oh, you mean social justice? Like the left is social justice to me. Like, and at, I feel like at this time where people are seeing how, when we talk about, people being vulnerable if you don't have five more than five weeks of of income <laughs> if you have five weeks of income stopped for you or even two weeks of income and you are at a loss and you're waiting 24 hours for food at a food bank like is that that is vulnerable and I think people you know in this Americanized way has have been like oh no it's just like you know I'm just hustling I'm hustling and there's like a America has been known for its hustle culture, but it has eaten its own tail. It's like it, it's it's like, yeah, we can get things done, but we also can run ourselves to the ground. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, I appreciate the work you do about and I'm sorry for all the Karens out there. They're assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like 
and I, I, and again, I don't really have much on my feed. I only have when someone writes about someone who's doing that. Like I don't really see that, but I'm always just like so horrified at people. But it's I hope that this you know. The, this shifting, this like crack that's happened. We literally had an earthquake the other night. I meant to ask Simone about it because I feel like the epicenter was like kind of close to her. Um, mm. Like, and you know, this we're already having this like major shakeup, and then to have like a physical manifestation of that happen is just like <laughs> completely absurd. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, I I hope that it makes people more curious and it makes people. Um, really think about how things got as bad as they have and yeah. you know the awakenings are hard i'm sorry that oh uh, i had somebody ask the name of that disability organization was it fat roads is that what you yeah, said it's fat rose r-o-s-e oh rose like a flower fat rose yeah. Yes. Okay, and it's .org, probably. Thank you, Nikki Billy, for asking that. Um, you're a delight. I can't wait till travel is possible. Yes. I want to spend well. some time in Atlanta. I have great peeps in Atlanta that I need to go. Uh, that I was kind of talking about visiting until all this happened, of course, like everybody. Um, and keep doing your work. I'm going to still I'm gonna keep following you. <laughs> Tell people how to find you. Tell people the best places to find you. How can we support you? Yes. So I am on Instagram and Twitter um, at Deshaun LH. Um, so D A S H A U N L H. Um, and I also have a website, DeshaunHarrison.com. Of course, you can find a lot of my writing on Where Your Voice, um, Mag.com as well. And I mean, I'm on YouTube too, but I don't really use it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's also the same name, Deshaun LH. Um, you know, I'm around these internet streets just doing my thing. <laughs> we'll keep following you. We'll keep following. And I'll keep dancing to your set list because it's awesome. Yes. Your playlist is amazing. Thank you. Come back. Will you come back? I will. Of course right. I will. Deshaun, I'll see you on Twitter. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for being here with Plus This. We'll see you soon.